Here is the Writer's Almanac for Friday. It's the 8th of March, 2019. It was on this day, 1935, Thomas Wolfe's novel of Time and the River was published. When he turned it in to Scribner's, it was as long as Proust's In Remembrance of Things Past. And Wolfe's editor, Maxwell Perkins, convinced him that it should be edited down to one volume. It's the birthday of John McPhee, born in Princeton, New Jersey, 1931, who teaches journalism at Princeton and who writes for the New Yorker magazine, has written about oranges, deltoid pumpkin seeds, binding energy curves, farmer's markets, merchant marine ships, the currents of the Mississippi River, birch bark canoe construction, and shifting seismic plates. Won the Pulitzer Prize just over a decade ago for his series on the geology of America. America called Annals of the Former World. John McPhee, who's published more than two dozen books, almost never writes more than one single space page a day. He said, you know, you put an ounce in a bucket each day, you get a quart. John McPhee wrote in his book, Oranges, an orange grown in Florida usually has a thin and tightly fitting skin, and it is also heavy with juice. Californians say that if you want to eat a Florida orange, you have to get into a bathtub first. California oranges are light in weight and have thick skins that break easily and come off in hunks. The flesh inside is marvelously sweet, and the segments almost separate themselves. In Florida, It is said that you can run over a California orange with a 10-ton truck and not even wet the pavement. It's the birthday of Kenneth Graham, born in Edinburgh, Scotland, 1859, raised by his grandmother in an old house in the south of England with a big attic and a garden near the River Thames and the Bisham Woods. The family had lost its fortune. Graham couldn't go to college. At the age of 19, got a job at the Bank of England. He was nostalgic for his childhood, and he collected wooden toys and stuffed animals, which filled his flat. And he wrote several books glorifying childhood, the golden age, dream days. When he was 38, still a bachelor, he met a woman named Elspeth Thompson. They married. They had a son named Alistair, who was in Poor health, blind in one eye. Graham told his son bedroom stories about a character named Mr. Toad, and he wrote these stories down, collected them in a book, The Wind in the Willows. It got terrible reviews, and it became a classic. Here's a poem for today by Laura Davies Foley, entitled, It is Time. It is time to gather sticks of wood so we can cook the sap that we have drawn from the earth. We will bore holes into the maple trees, collect buckets, stir the froth as it boils. Then we'll finish it on the stove in the barn. We will do this together, balancing the heavy iron vat, pouring the hot syrup, tasting the sweetness. We did it through the pregnancies, the births. Let's do it once again. And then we will cultivate the honeybees and tend to the alfalfa in the fields. It will be the best of times once more, fourteen loads of fresh hay, and my hair will be long, and we will collect raspberries and make a pie. The garden will yield a bumper crop of beets and basil, and we will split wood all fall and stack it and be ready for the winter when you will weave a blanket on your loom with dog hair and horse hair and my hair and some dyed wool too. And I will nurse the babies by the fire and neither of us will grow older and we will never forget and nothing will ever die. We need to gather sticks now and build a fire quickly before the season passes on, before the field where you are sleeping, blossoms. A poem entitled It Is Time by Laura Davies Foley from Mapping the Fourth Dimension, published by Harbor Mountain Press and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.